OK, let's try to estimate the space elevator tension and how feasible it is. To get a number, we need to know what the space elevator is going to be made of. We want something that's very strong but very light because its main challenge is to support its own weight. So we really want something with the highest possible ratio of tensile strength to weight. And the best substance that's in common use today is actually something called xylon, which is a synthetic polymer, a bit like the ones used in bulletproof vests or Kevlar. And that has a density of about 1,500 kilograms per cubic meter. So slightly more dense than water, but not very heavy. And a tensile strength of about 6 by 10 to the 9 newtons per meter squared, which means a cable with a cross-sectional area of 1 meter, which is a pretty big cable, can withstand a force of six billion newtons. So this is pretty strong stuff. Okay, so let's try to estimate what sort of tension you need for a space elevator. Is this going to be enough? So we've got our cable dangling down from our geostationary satellite. Now, for each part of the cable, the tension upwards is to be enough to support the weight. If we take a bit of cable at the bottom, Gravity is quite strong, it's going to be very close to G. And the centrifugal force is negligible because it's not going around very fast. As you go further and further up, the gravity gets weaker, but the centrifugal force gets stronger. So most of the weight is going to be the bottom bits. By the time you're up here, the centrifugal force almost as balanced as gravity, so it's not going to take much force to hold those bits up. If we remember our equation, Now this term is going to be the strongest, um, that one's going to be smaller. This goes up as you go further out, this one goes down, but this one's going to be the dominant one. So what that's telling you is the extra amount of tension per unit weight, the slope, like dt over dr, is going to be most here. So if we plot tension versus height, the slope is going to be biggest at the beginning, and then it's going to flatten out. So what that tells you is that if we just tick the bottom, oh, I don't know, 10,000 kilometers and work out the force just from that, that's not going to be too far off the total force. It might get us you know, 70, 80 percent of the way there. So that's the approximation I'm going to make. We're just going to take the bottom 10,000 kilometers. And I'm going to assume that G is the same as it is on the Earth's surface, you know, about 10 for out that thing. Of course, gravity actually will get weaker as you go up, but not by that much. I'm also going to ignore the centrifugal force. And again, for the bottom 10,000 kilometers, it's not great. Uh, it's not a great effect. And then I'm going to pretend the entire top half isn't there. So we're going to be overestimating here because we're going to assume constant gravity all the way up, but we're going to throw away the top half. So I'm hoping those two approximations will more or less cancel out, give us an answer that hopefully isn't too far off. So, we've just got the bottom 10,000 kilometers under a gravity of G. The force needed to hold it up is going to just be the volume, which is going to be the length times the cross-sectional area times the density times G. So the length is 10 to the 4 kilometers, so 5, 6, 7, 10 to the 7 meters, area of 1. Density is about 10 to the 3. G is about 1, 10, 10 to the 1. So that's about 10 to the 11 newtons per meter squared. And if you compare it to xylon, that's a bit worrying. Xylon's about 6 by 10 to the 9. So we're an order of magnitude off, maybe a bit more. So maybe a factor of about 20 off. So that's telling us right now that we have a problem, that even some of the strongest substances, the strongest, lightest ones that we currently know, like xylon, aren't quite there. But it's not too far off. If it was like a million times off, we'd know it was totally silly. But the factor of 10 or so, that's telling us maybe, maybe we have to do a more detailed calculation or tinker with something, we can actually get this to work or use a stronger substance. So it's not looking totally ridiculous, but it's certainly looking a bit scary.